I'm thrilled you're here. Happy, happy Monday. Um, I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a body mind expert and a shiatsu massage therapist and I use these amazing skills and uh, ideas and philosophies and patterns and um, methods to help women heal or cope with or survive um, toxic and narcissistic relationships and it's one of the most fulfilling ways I could have ever used these tools. Um, so one of the things that uh, that I never did as a, as a kid was I never read or watched things which were too dramatic, which were too emotional and that's actually a common, very common side effect of um, people who've been traumatized in some way. And remember, trauma is an unexpected event that you feel you have no control over, that you're not allowed to process through, physically, mentally, and emotionally process through. When that happens, um, that emotion, which is physical, it's a nervous system response, it's an electrical charge, it's uh, chemicals in your body, they're not allowed to flush out. And when these um, reactions aren't allowed to flush out of our body, then they kind of go underground and they hide in all sorts of places. For mine, mine hid mainly in my diaphragm and in my gut. Those were the main ones. Uh, and I also held a lot in my neck and head too. So uh, one of the ways that I, I dealt with you know, these physical responses because they started to cause health problems, right? IBS, headaches, um, chronic back pain, things like that. One of the ways that, um, that I started to deal with that stuff is I went to therapy, like most of us. Now, the challenge of being in therapy is that um, at two o'clock in the afternoon, your guard and your walls and your ego and your everything might be in place. And it's very, very tricky to trigger these things in a you know two o'clock afternoon um, therapy session. Because in order to access these feelings, we need to not just um, recognize or intellectualize that we have them. Oh yeah, I have anger against blah, blah, blah but we actually have to feel it, which was one of the reasons that I always avoided anything that was too dramatic. Wizard of Oz, I'd only read really um, shallow, thin, non-sex Victorian romance novels because that's all I could handle. And even then when the, uh, the two main characters would have an argument because you know that's how books are written, when they'd have an argument, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't watch a lot of sitcoms with drama. I couldn't do any of that stuff because it was more than I was capable of handling, more than I was ready to feel or experience. Now, on the other hand, I did go and, and I'd watch all sorts of crazy things about death and murder and investigations and, you know, the, the drama and painful things in the world. But because it was expressed in a very intellectual point of view, um, I could handle it better because I wasn't feeling it. Now, here's the challenge with that. When we don't, when we aren't able to, or safe enough, or ready to, or um, haven't found the, the, the things which trigger us at that very deep level past all of those protections, then those emotions and those beliefs and energetic signals, they stay stuck in our body. Now one of the interesting things about body work is the effect of what we're doing changes when people are in different body positions. It's almost like uh, everything has to come into alignment. They may be fine when they're laying on their back, but as soon as they lay aside, maybe in a little bit of a fetal position, then it will bring the emotion up. That's actually good to be triggered, but it's only good to be triggered when it's in a safe way, when it's on your terms, when it's not overwhelming you and it's not flooding you. My psychologist and I have had a lot of long talks about this, how many people in the healing profession, um, they encourage uh, someone to be flooded by an emotion, which of course, when you're flooded by an emotion, it's overwhelming and you're gonna shut down again because it's too much. And then you'll end up with some sort of healing crisis on the back end. 
physically dealing with trauma and releasing it from your body needs to be done in amounts and, and ways which are safe and help, uh, help process through rather than re-traumatize somebody because you may be fine but all of that stuff is stuck in your body and then when it comes up um, it can be super overwhelming but it is important that it comes up now what I did this weekend is I decided I had a lot of open time so I did some wonderfully relaxing things for myself and I decided to delve into some dramatic movies which uh, are not have never been my style and I watched one that had a number of traumas in it um, you know things would go well and then unexpectedly there'd be a trauma you know perpetrated and this this was over you know an amount of time like over an amount of 50 years or something like that and so I couldn't watch the whole movie I could only watch part of the movie but what it did for me is that it helped trigger some of those deeper latent things that I needed to work on and releasing. And so this morning, as I usually do, I took my habit and I worked through it. Now it was interesting because I hold most of my tension here. You know, a lot of tension here, right in my diaphragm anymore. And, um, and part of that's related to shallow breathing. So when I was a kid, or when any of us go through trauma, one of the things that we do is we breathe very shallowly so that it helps us control our emotions, help us control how we're feeling. And so you don't take deep, big breaths. You don't have a lot of movement through there. Um, instead, you lock it down and your breathing is very shallow. And so if you breathe bigger than that sweet spot or less than that sweet spot, you're not gonna be able to clear it. Because remember, different body positions, different layers, different things come together. So you actually have to physically, in some way, return to the place energetically of the trauma. And so that's what I did. I stayed right in that spot, right in that spot in my diaphragm of shallow breathing, where I could feel was, was on edge, was very uncomfortable. Now what does that do? Well, when you have a practice every day, it means that you chip away at things and you're fairly comfortable and skilled with helping process your own emotions, right? Because it's a practice, so you're good at it if you do it every day. And it allows you to, on your terms, without being flooded, start to work with and deal with and, and remove uh, some of these traumas which are physically in your body. Now, how do you remove it? Well, there's a couple points in removing or detoxing trauma from your body. One, it has to be accessed. Hence, books, movies, reading articles. Do What most people do is they wait until life sort of blindsides them unexpectedly, and then they've got no tools and no processing and no things, and they end up being re You can wait for a narcissist to come and re-traumatize you, or you can create a habit where you start working on this and feeling your way through your body. So number one, it has to, um, it has to get past your blocks. It has to, it has to get past the, the things that get in your way. And um, part of the way to do that is to self-trigger yourself just in a small amount. You know, you don't start with something big, you start with smaller things and then as you get more experience, you can work with bigger and bigger things. The next part of it is you have to move the energy in some way. So now you're triggered at a small amount when you're irritated or frustrated or anxious. That's a small amount of triggering. And um, when you're triggered, you have to move it in some way. Now some people prefer doing things physically like dance or um, playing sports um, or a punching bag. And that's one way to do it. But my problem was um, it wasn't real enough for me and what is re more real for me is visualization now the body doesn't know the difference between what you visualize and what you actually do which is a wonderful thing your nervous system doesn't know the difference and so you can sit and visualize how you might have wanted to react to the trauma what you were feeling while you're in that healing space that you've made for yourself and so um, what I did this morning is I allowed myself to be back in that trauma, back in that space, you know, breathing shallowly right where it's uncomfortable and visualize myself expressing the emotions that I felt. 
So what I did is in, in my mind, in my visualization, I took a baseball bat. I happened to be in a bathroom. I took a, a baseball bat and I started to, you know, visualize just um, demolishing, you know, doing a renovation, knock down, tear down um, on this bathroom to express the feelings that I had because finally they needed to be expressed. Now the third piece is that it needs to be witnessed. Now many people think that other people need to witness your emotions and that is super duper helpful, but it's really hard to find somebody who's uh, balanced enough, they know what they're doing, they handle it properly. Even good therapists or, or energy workers are, are a little hard to find. And there has to be a, a safe space for you to express where they can witness and be present for you and validate your experience and hear you express it. Now, since that isn't, you know, people aren't on call at 2 a.m. when you may be triggered or 6 a.m. or 10 p.m. or whatever it may be, um, they're not, you know, people to help witness how you feel are not on call. But the best witness is you. The best witness for your emotion is when you provide that emotional safe space for whatever you're feeling and thinking without any judgmentalisms, without saying it's wrong or bad or you shouldn't do this or why are you feeling this way. Instead, just allowing that part of you that needs to express that emotion to be free enough in your imagination or free enough physically to express, to feel, to release, to relax, to um, move through the anger and the hurt and the terror and the fear and the anxiety around that. And when you witness yourself, one, you give yourself one of the greatest gifts ever, which is you are building that relationship between you and you, saying that you can trust yourself, that you love yourself, that you value yourself. And when you do that, when you, um, when you witness your experience in a space of love and no judgment, just holding that bigger space for yourself, um, you're able to release it. You're able to release it from your body. The nervous system is able to let go of it and relax and body can flush things out. The chemicals and the toxins and the cellular waste that have built up are allowed to flush out. You'll probably have to um, go to the bathroom or maybe you'll start coughing or maybe you, know, you will uh, release uh, gases or sweat or something um, but what will happen is there will be some sort of a release or crying but it's a relaxation so your body can finally uh, push through and process through the things which um, which you've been holding on to because they were trapped in the process you had the experience you were out of control but it wasn't expressed and it wasn't allowed it wasn't witnessed and validated and, and to be okay. Typically we um, end up stopping at, at not being able to express it and then it comes out in all these other crazy ways, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. So if you're having some physical health problems, here's your assignment today. I want you to take a little bit of space. I want you to visit that uncomfortable place that you're feeling. And um, if you're having a hard time accessing it, try watching some of those things which are uncomfortable or reading some of those things that are uncomfortable. Um, other accounts of the type of trauma that you had, other people's experiences, um, other descriptions of it, because that will help you tap into it. But remember, don't go all or nothing. Don't be a whole perfection thing because you wanna do this in a safe, healthy, loving, supportive way. And if it takes a while, you know, many, many days or weeks to keep processing the same thing, that's okay because then you're doing it in a healthy way. You're not doing it in a way that uh, will uh, cause more physical, mental, or emotional damage, make more difficulty for your life. You know, you have to find sort of that sweet spot. And when you do that, make sure you have things around you or a game plan for when you've decided you need to stop processing for the moment. It could be music, getting up and taking a shower, going for a walk, sitting on the ground, breathing, dancing, going to exercise, starting your day, washing the dishes, whatever. Something that helps shift your mood out of the trauma, out of that physical sense, and um, for the time being into a better space. 
Now, sometimes that can be hard. So what I do is I promise that part of me, I say, you know what? Um, now is not the time for us to keep working on this, but I'm gonna give you time tomorrow or I'm gonna give you time tonight and we'll work on it some more. Doesn't mean I've forgotten it. It just means that we have other things we need to work on now um, or that, that this part of me is needs a break from feeling. So as long as you do that reassurance piece and you stick with it and you follow through and you keep that promise to yourself, then you will keep chipping away at these things. And what you will find is when you start to clear your trauma in a safe and loving and healthy way is that you stop feeling so anxious, you stop feeling so depressed, your health issues start to take care of themselves, um, your body starts to fix itself because you're not as reactionary, um, you don't create more difficulties in your life because you're able to stay very present. Um, you're able to navigate challenges instead of react to them. You start to um, hear more and see more in a positive way. Your relationships get better. Your relationship with yourself gets better. Your health gets better, all of these things. So give yourself some time today to um, let yourself trigger on a light scale and to so you can get past that that guardian that's going to keep you safe no matter what and you can finally give yourself a safe place to feel the things that you weren't allowed to feel to express the things that you weren't allowed to express and to witness them without judgment or guilt or shame or harshness or anything just with um that sacred listening that quiet listening okay so that's your assignment for today now, if you're finding these things too daunting and you feel stuck and it's feeling like you could never do this or this is a challenge, let me know. I do, um, I've partnered with a book on narcissism, great for information. I do um, a private group coaching program, the link's up above in the title. And um, you can join that at any time. And that also has a private Facebook group to connect and uh, communicate and uh, find other like minds going through the same process, which is a gem, which is perfect. Or if, um, if you're ready or you want to, or the time is right, or you've been thinking about this for a while and looking for a coach, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching packages. Um, because this stuff, it takes a while to, to get through this trauma stuff. Uh, but when you do, it's so worth it. And the fastest way is to do it with someone sort of guiding the process. So um, give me a call, send me a message. We'll talk and figure out a coaching program that works for you with your time, with your energy, with your finances, with all of that. And we'll figure it out, okay? So I think that's it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. I'm looking forward to mine. And um, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.